I'm Chick Devon Ball, and welcome to Chick's Happy Nostalgia Show, a podcast where me and my friends talk about nostalgic moments and pop culture from our childhoods. We interview people such as actors, producers, composers, puppeteers, and more. We'll be sharing our favorite memories, talk about behind the scenes moments, and so much more. I'm your host, Jake Devon Ball, and welcome to this Jake's Happy Nostalgia Show episode. Hi everyone, welcome to the 25th episode of Jake's Happy Nostalgia Show. I'm your host Jake, and our co-host we have for today, Chris Bixby, Ryan McCullough, and Matt Bingle. How are you guys? Good, and Marty Marsh. We are well. really good. Yeah. <laughs> yep, yeah. Marty's here too. Hello. <laughs> Very great I'm to be here. Yes. Today's guest we have for today, he he's he's an actor and in, in The Wire, and as well as being a voice and a couple of characters that, I, well, I know specifically. So mostly, same as, same as three of you guys here too. Mostly he, known for a certain orange dog in it, shark. <laughs> yes. Yeah, you said orange. I got excited. <laughs> He's the voice of Kenny for for the show called Kenny the Shark, and and another show that I'm only really I know him really is he's the voice of Orange Shark, like what Wyatt said, to for a PBS Kids Go show which is kind of a game show in the way when you think about it yeah it was a game show if you think about it yeah and it the was. show and the show is called fetch with buff of men and he's a guy who's the voice of buff of men and he also did stuff for the show jellystone as well yeah mm-hmm. that's it's right yeah <laughs> and all a couple things here and there <laughs> and all yeah. stuff where that he's done here he is going around applause to jim conroy jim how are you <laughs> Jake, Chris, Wyatt, Matt, thanks for having me. Appreciate it. Thanks for having <laughs> me on your show today. Definitely appreciate and, it. And Matt, yeah, who's, uh, what's the character you're working with, Matt? Uh, oh. That's Marty. Marty Monster. Mm-hmm. Hello. Hello, Marty. Hi. So happy to meet you. Well, <laughs> oh, it's a pleasure indeed, sir. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so, to, st- for, to start off with, this is how we got started as being an actor and wire ass, and as well as voice actor, too. Yeah. Yeah, because you can, uh, there's a lot of different areas in the acting profession that you could focus on. Um, I went to college in upstate New York uh, at SUNY New Paltz to study theater. Uh, But I didn't want to be on stage doing theater. What I wanted to do ever since I was a little kid was to do funny voices for cartoon characters. But I didn't really know how to do it. So I figured if I went to school to study acting, that would kind of help me. Uh... And uh, and from there, I moved down to New York City, and uh, it took me about four years to find an agent that would represent me for um, for voiceover, which is where I wanted to focus on. Yeah. And I did that for uh, uh, I've done that pretty much for the last twenty one years. Wow. And then wow. Uh, I'd say about. Uh, Maybe a third to almost halfway through my career, I started doing um, on-camera commercials where you actually got to see my face, which was very nervous, and I, I didn't really like that, wow. even though the money was good. Uh, <laughs> but um, but I've tried to do a little of everything. Um, I've been lucky enough to do a, a little of everything. The only thing I, I haven't done yet is to be in uh, have my face in a movie like yeah. a major motion picture or anything like that. And I, I think at this point in my career, that's that's not really ever going to be my focus. So um, I've I've got, had the opportunity to work with a lot of different writers and producers and directors for both commercial and, anima- and animation and now scripted podcasts are, yeah. are big. I just did one for Marvel. Oh, nice. Uh, oh, wow. That's cool. Yeah, I think Sirius XM uh, and maybe some other, I'm not sure all the other platforms, Apple Podcasts, Marvel started doing a series of scripted uh, podcasts. Uh, they did one for, um, uh, I was on the one for Hawkeye. So oh, there you go. A, a Hawkeye wow. one on wow. Sirius XM. Yeah, because there's a, cool. a Hawkeye series. Yeah, and that happened that in a small world scenario. That was actually written by somebody that I went to college with. So I'm, I'm oh, sure wow. that helped get me in a little bit nice. from uh, nice. Jay Holtham, who That's writes awesome. on Supergirl. Oh, oh and, I uh, think a that, bunch of yeah. other stuff. So, I know. I've yeah. heard of that, sure. Uh, so, yeah, so voices, cartoons are just... Um, you know, you audition for everything your agent yeah. puts in front of you. And one of the things they put in front of me was uh, Kenny the Shark, which was my yes. first uh, I grew up cartoon watching that show. For... Me too. <laughs> I'm yeah, I thought you. it was a really good show. It is um, a good show. I was just, 
I was disappointed that it only lasts two seasons. Yeah. Um, yeah because it was one of the few shows that were out that really um, put a girl as the main character, and, oh, and yeah. she was smart and feisty, and uh, and, and it was uh, refreshing to see. They focus on that a lot now, but back then they didn't as much. Yeah. So unless it was Dora, you really didn't, you know, <laughs> you didn't pay attention. But I thought it was yeah, a really yeah, good right. show. I liked it a lot. It, it and was, then a it was couple a of years, show. yeah. The theme a couple song years was good after as well. That, I liked it too. Yeah. Um, it, fun fact: the the man that played uh, the father on uh, Kenny the Shark. Uh, not, yes, on Kenny the Shark. Uh, Russell Horton was also the voice of the Trix uh, Rabbit for the Trix cereal. Oh wow. Oh, oh wow. wow! That is that's and interesting. Kelly wow. Rabke, who played Cat, was uh, is a, a professional singer, and she's on tour all the time. Uh, and she's fantastic. She's been in yeah. singing groups and music acts and in musicals. So uh, nice. it was a very talented cast. And the late Peter Fernandez, who you know brought, uh, who I understand brought uh, Speed Racer to uh, America, and yeah. I think was the voice of Racer X, if I'm not mistaken directed uh the first and maybe the second season it's it a long time ago but that that was kind of fun to work for a legend yeah. like that and uh a couple of years after that an audition for uh fetch with rough ruffman uh which yes. was not the name yes. of the show at the time dropped in my lap and i i auditioned <laughs> for that a couple of times and um went to boston and got the job there and i worked on that for five seasons and i still do mm -hmm. rough ruffman for uh, projects for PBS or WGBH in Boston on nice. occasion. They nice. uh, spin off the Rush R Ruff Ruffman show. Yes. There's like yes. a hamster one now yes. where uh, mm -hmm. Ruff Ruffman is apparently a janitor, so he has, <laughs> he has certainly fallen from grace <laughs> with no explanation as to how he went from a, the host of his own game show to just being a, you have to make a series of really bad choices. <laughs> to uh, to fall for him. and I was a little disappointed that we uh, they didn't explore what got him to that point. But then again, it wasn't his show, so uh, mm -hmm. he had no recourse, and I had no recourse to ask. I just you know took the job. But I'm always yeah. happy to voice uh, rough when they need it, while He's I'm awesome. still able to do the voice. Yeah, and it's good. Yeah, it's cool that you mentioned Boston because I'm you know in Massachusetts. You know, that's where I'm from. So mm -hmm. where uh, where in Massachusetts are you? I am in Harwich. I was just in Lee, Massachusetts, not too long ago. How nice. um, I'm not familiar Hello. with uh, Massachusetts. How far is 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 that near Lee? I don't think so. I don't think it is. Yeah, yeah. yeah my son might be mm. going to a school there, so when he and not only college, Russ, so. he voiced every other character on that show. <laughs> yeah. Russ made everybody else. West of West of yeah. Finley. You voiced everybody. Yeah, yeah. yeah that Glenn. was. Uh, at, at, yeah, the, I voiced everybody. Well, Grandma Ruffman was based on my wife's uh, grandmother. Yeah. Oh wow. Uh, <laughs> who passed away a number of years ago, but she oh. she always had a voice like this. Yeah. So yeah. Everything was like you know I, I kind of um, a lot of her little buzzwords like hello dears and yes. uh, oh yeah. it's horrible, oh, it's terrible I. <laughs> Oi, Bubby! You know that was all her <laughs> grandmother. So yeah, that was nice because her father's like, you know, I still get to spend time with my mother when I watch the show, and I'm like, you're yeah, too nice. old to watch the show. Stop that. <laughs> uh, but I, but before all that, I was uh, the first thing I ever did was uh, was Celebrity Deathmatch on MTV. Oh yeah, yeah. Was, oh yeah. yeah. That, okay, yeah. That I remember that. Predated everything, everything. Eric Fogel, who created it. And it's done a ton of claymation. I love claymation. Yeah. I love yeah. how uh, how long it takes to do it. I love how detailed it needs to be. It's, that's why I love seeing anything that Ardman Studios puts out. And you zoom right in, yes. you can see the thumbprint on things. So I did a ton of voices for Celebrity Deathmatch. And, uh, really funny you know, show. Yeah. Yeah. And it Fantastic. was it was Eric and the writers and the engineers really g got my feet wet. Um, in getting behind a microphone and learning how to speak into a microphone properly. Yeah. So nice. uh, I'd be remiss if I didn't credit uh, Celebrity Deathmatch as my first uh, foray into um, mm -hmm. into into uh, figuring out how to do voiceovers. Yeah, there you mm -hmm. go. And you also yeah. did Curious George as well. Ooh. Yeah, I, I don't... Uh, I, there's a couple of things on IMDb that yeah. I was not in. 
Yeah. And Curious George was one of them. I'm trying to figure out what they think I did. Now, now <laughs> I'm, getting, I'm getting older. Yeah, they think and you did so Daniel. And so I forget things. It's on Wikipedia. They I think you did Daniel. I, yeah, Wikipedia not me. Is and so I feel bad. Right? I don't know who the actor is who did Daniel, but it, it wasn't me. And there's <laughs> another show on IMDb that I don't even know what the show is. Uh, I'll bring that up there. And I've I've written because I don't know who, I don't know who's um, in charge. People are just editing of IMDb. It just all of a sudden, I'll get cast in something and it shows up. Um, <laughs> It's like it's yeah, like when you did Ice Age. Is that you doing Ice Age or is that something else? That there you go. You're in this new project. Me. No one's heard of it. Oh, yay! Yeah. Wait, wait, so who'd you voice wait. in Ice Age? Uh, so in Ice Age, that's interesting. That's a whole other... Let me try to see if I'm even... Yeah, look at that. It's star meter. I don't even know what that means. <laughs> um, <laughs> just, yeah, 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 I at, le I at least the update the... Uh, all right, my page. What is this? See, I'm just so I'm so bad on the internet. I just said uh, I don't know. There's uh all right, filmography. Okay. So like there's an untitled Illumination Entertainment project. I don't know what that is. Uh Mooch, I know, <laughs> Cuphead show I know. Yeah. The game, oh, yeah. Trumbo, Rio, Epic, Ice Age, Top Cat, yes, Kung Fu Magoo, that was an embarrassment. Uh <laughs> Pitch Wars. That actually, you know what? That Star Wars two point five, the Pitch Wars might actually have been the very first thing I ever did. Oh, wow. Um, wow. Yeah, really? and this is the one. Abby Hatcher, Fuzzly Catcher in 2019 is Harry Harriman. I don't even know what that is. And I've tried to write to IMDb. I said, hey, man, whoever's supposed to get the credit for that, it ain't me. It's uh, Walter Yeah. Yeah, it's probably just a different, like, Jim Conroy. <laughs> yeah, maybe. maybe there's another. Maybe. It's you possible. Know. It's very possible. So, but, there, you know, there, it's there. like, okay, yeah, I guess I'm certainly to, fine uh, with getting credit for stuff I did, but I... I I don't want to get. Uh, I have to look up myself to see what I even did. I guess according to uh, IMDb, I, there's only one Jim Conroy. <laughs> <laughs> or maybe there's yeah, more we don't know be. about. <laughs> there's yeah, there's a bunch of Jim Conroys, but only one in the industry. I'm pretty sure. And if there is more than one, they have to change their name because I got there first. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, that worked out good I think for me. I'm just kidding. I was going to say, I think yeah. Stop but as time. far as like, so as what did you say? As uh, Ice Age, so yeah. Ice Age Four, yeah. yeah. So um. I, you guys know what a loop group is? No. You ever hear that term? Uh, so. Okay, so, mm -mm. so when you're watching um, an animated movie, you know yeah. that there's a certain amount of actors that play yeah. a certain amount of characters in the credits. And then there's mm -hmm. all these background voices, like there's 10 squirrels oh, way yeah. in the background. We're not going to pay a celebrity or an actor you mm -hmm. know, $1,000 to voice that. So they create this, uh, it's almost like an improv troupe of actors to get together after the film is made and and try to figure out what voices are for some of the characters that are way in the back or mm -hmm. off to the side yeah. or they create a crowd and they keep looping that in i guess they i don't know maybe that's why they call it loop group so um uh, a man uh, a, a duel by the name of a married couple jason harris and peter pamela rose uh offered me to join them on a, on i guess on a a top cat movie as yes. a loop group and oh, I didn't know what right. yeah I didn't know what that was just to do background voices so mostly when you're doing background voices on something you're blending yeah. in you're not trying to stand out but the cool thing about when you when you're in a loop group mm -hmm. uh that's going right. to do all the little tiny voices sometimes they create another character that they're going to highlight for a split second mm -hmm. and so they'll all look right. at the loop group and there's maybe 10 or 15 of you in the group maybe less now, mm -hmm. and they'll say, I need somebody to voice a chipmunk getting choked and thrown across the room. And so they'll point to you, you do it. You know, because everybody will want to do it, but they'll like, uh, try you. All right, mm -hmm. now try you, now try you. And then they tell you later, hey, we used your <laughs> that So that's, that's how I got, you know, that's how I got my first, you know, real movie uh, right. voiceover through, yeah. uh, nice. through Jason and Peter. Uh, and they're mostly out in Los Angeles now, and they do a lot of that. They run loop groups out there. It's a it's a fun business to to be in, and it's great to be part of a loop group, especially on an animated series. So, so when you look on the on the IMDb page and you see Ice Age or you see uh, Epic Epic yes. Two Epic Two, mm -hmm. I was a little bit more featured because I got to be the voice of like a race announcer when some animals were flying around, and then also the Capuano Turtle. 
Yeah, I guess, which, oh, which okay. I didn't know what to do other than just do Ruff Ruffman's voice. Yeah. Like my, my Ruff Ruffman voice, which is basically my voice, but a little, but a little more, you know, up, but really yeah. not too much different. You know, you'll notice in the first few seasons of Ruff Ruffman, like the first couple of seasons, yeah. it's more me, even more relaxed and talking as myself. Yeah. And then for some reason, the producers over the course of time, because they were, you know, skewing uh, to a certain age, they, they wanted me, they used to have a direction called, we need more giddy rough, more giddy. Yeah. It's always like a lot more up this, you know, it's like <laughs> if you watch early. Yeah, I know. It, which draw every time I would get the giddy note, I, I would I, I pull my hair out. Because I'm like, yes. I just, he'll be excited when he's excited and he's going to, I want to be normal when I'm normal. But the thing about not being the producer <laughs> yeah. or the director yes. is you don't get to make that decision. So you do what they say. No. And in the end, they were right because it was, uh, it worked. It was a good show. Yeah. So, but that's how I got on some of the bigger movies as part of that um, loop group that mm -hmm. was doing uh, background voices on films. Sometimes you get a line to stand out. For the most part, you don't. Yeah, and as far as TV series go, Jellystone's another thing that you did. <laughs> Jellystone, awesome. yeah. Um, so I live on the East Coast, like I'm in New Jersey. Yeah. And uh, mm -hmm. most of the animation is voiced in on the West Coast in Los Angeles. And that is yeah. where the, the largest portion of talent for animation lives. They'd had so many good people there. It was, it's a small community, yeah. but it's very tight knit. They all know each other. They all compete against each other. But for the most part, they're friendly amongst each other for the most part. I'm sure, yeah. you know, with a couple. Of, yeah. Right so they are very aware of their contracts. They're very aware of the work. They've worked with everybody. Everybody knows them. So they have such a, a talented pool of actors. There's really no point to go anywhere else. So if, if you want to do cartoon voices, Historically, you had to move out there and I was yeah. married and I have children and I'm not going to uproot my family just so I can go, <laughs> you know, somewhere else. Yeah. <laughs> so I had to accept that, like what I did here, which, you know, for East Coast, you know, two, uh, you know, the lead on two series is not bad. You know, I did yeah. 126 episodes of two shows. You know, it's not what I wanted, but I, I found that my life led more in the commercial Mm -hmm. uh, world mm -hmm. and that's where I that's where I made my money now all of a sudden my a, the agency I was with had an animation department but the West Coast really didn't give much to the East Coast so there really weren't many opportunities so you had to move out there right and then um, a new person an agent at my agency took over the animation department and said I want to get rid of this myth that it can only be done on the West Coast yeah so let me go to the West Coast. Let me make relationships with Nickelodeon and Disney and HBO and all these networks wow. and find out all the casting yeah. directors. And let me say, hey, I have talented people back in New York. And, it, and, and if they will agree to fly out here if they get a job, will you think about hiring them? And they said, yes. So she is the reason that I started doing... Um, animation on the West Coast. I oh, booked wow. Jellystone in yes. 2018. <laughs> nice. 2018. I auditioned, and it didn't come out until the summer of 2021. That's something <laughs> I've had to get used to. You work on an animated series, it probably won't come out for two to three years, and you can't talk yeah. about it till it comes yeah. out. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, I can imagine that so must have been I, pretty difficult. Yeah, so all of a sudden, it's, I mean, look, you have to, like, understand, hey, they got to draw it, man. Yeah, you know, it's like right. You can voice it, but they have to draw it. Well, no, but just not being able to like talk about it for so long. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm st I'm getting used to that now. Uh, but you're still like, it's like you would love to voice something and then see it in like six yeah. months. But it's just yeah. right, you know how that yeah. works. Yeah. yeah. Unless right. it's South Park, then in South Park it comes out in six days. I mean, if you look at Pixar, wrong. like Pixar's <laughs> movies take like a couple of years before yeah. like, they get yeah. finished. Yeah. I mean, you know, every out. blade of grass gets animated. You know, they don't mess around over at Pixar. No. So, yeah. <laughs> so I, so good on her word. She started getting the West Coast auditions on the East Coast, and then her talent on the East Coast started booking some of the work. And Jellystone was my first uh, booking for her. Yeah, uh, and uh, it came out this summer. Uh, it critically did very well. I don't know if there'll be a season two. Yeah, but last I'm pretty summer. Proud actually. of the work, and I got to voice uh, right, 2021, down. right? Yeah. yeah, yeah. When did it come out? 2021, right? Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. 2022. Yeah. We're in. It so did. I'm the voice of Huckleberry Hound. I'm the voice of uh, Captain Caveman, and uh, uh, and some other ancillary characters on the show. The reason uh, I asked about and, 
That is because yeah, one that. of our previous guests is a huge fan of all those shows. The comic Cage is what I'm talking about. He grew up with that Oh, yeah. Stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Big fan. He's a cool dude. Mm-hmm. Shout out to you, Cade. Mm-hmm. Yep. Yeah. Dig that. Yeah. You, um, anyway. you know, the from what I read on people's reaction to Jellystone, uh, it was kind of like split between either you really liked the new direction they went with some of the characters and you liked yeah. the approach, and if you love uh, Mr. Greenblatt's uh, vision, yeah. then this was this was good. If you were stuck in time and you're like, no, this is different than what I grew up with, then you probably weren't going to like it. And yeah. I, I think Mr. Yeah. Greenblatt, um, from what I understand, said there's really no, you can't beat nostalgia, if I'm quoting him correctly. Right. And I yeah, grew up, you, you know, I, I was born in 1970. So I grew up with all these cartoons. I was yeah. there. Right. And, and I loved... I loved the Hanna Barbera characters, yes. the personalities more than I loved the actual shows they were on. Mm-hmm. It, it just wasn't. I I never laughed out loud, yeah, like I did when I watched Bugs and Daffy and Porky. Like that, you know that that pacing and that timing was m- yeah. more appealing to me. But I knew all the characters. I just didn't think it was terribly funny. But they were still iconic. So. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. You know, and I don't, I, I'm not, I don't laugh very easily and I'm, I'm on the show, so I'm kind of biased, but I'm watching Jellystone and I'm laughing out loud on a lot of things. And there are jokes that kind of aim a little higher. And then there's, you know, your regular fart jokes and all that too. But, uh, I was, I was pretty yeah. pleased with it. And I think the cast is yeah. tremendous. I love what they did with Jabberjaw. Kids yeah. today don't know who Curly yes. is. I mean, yeah. they might, but not without digging. You know, I, I think yeah. it's great. I love that they changed the, the gender of some of the characters. I, I'm, I'm glad yeah. they gave Cindy Bear uh, something to do other than be Yogi Bear's girlfriend. I think it works. <laughs> yeah. uh, Thomas yeah. Lennon as Top Cat is so good, and his team is yeah. so good, that I, it would not shock me if, if he gets his own, if they start taking some of these characters and do their own shows just like everybody did with the rest of the Hanna Barbera stuff yeah. because it's such the 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 timing and the it's so good mm-hmm. it's so good I, i'm really happy with it and if it doesn't come back for a second season i'm still happy with it i'd yeah, like right. to see it come back I'd like i feel to see like it. we did more episodes that came out so i feel mm-hmm. like there's like a I, I i'm trying to like look through like my paperwork and i'm like i feel like we did more of these yeah. And they just haven't come out yet. Maybe that's what a season two would be, but then again, I don't know. Yeah, it's kind of like you know. did the Casa Grandes, which I know Jakey has a f- friend of his that loves that show. Yes, yeah, like a cool Yeah, uh, I find once point. you, yeah, once Got you get wine. in the club, you're kind of in the club a little bit. Like yeah. once you start to work with some of these producers and directors and writers, they kind of like to use the people they like. So I'm, I'm still, I guess, technically, I mean, I had a really good year for animation, yeah. considering it was my first. Like, I have to say, part of me thought the pandemic was advantageous to me <laughs> career-wise in animation because um, I did agree to go out to L.A. if I booked work, but then all of a sudden, everybody had to only work from home. Right. Yep. Well, yep. now yep. now you can live anywhere. Now yeah, I can yeah. move to Omaha yeah. if I want. <laughs> you, know, yeah. this, you know, this isn't a Zoom background. This is a booth that I put in. Yeah. It's a Studio Bricks mm-hmm. booth. Uh, my agent nice. called me at the beginning of the pandemic and she said, if you want to still make a living, you're going to have to put a studio in your home. And I was like, I don't want to spend that kind of money. She's like, or you can not eat. I don't care. <laughs> you know, so I was like, okay. So a week later I put, it's only four by three. Yeah. So it's, I, I, in hindsight, I would have loved two more feet of space to stretch my legs out. Uh, but oh well, but I think you can expand on this and it, it really is. They call it a uh, studio bricks and it comes in almost like Lego pieces. Yeah. You just go <laughs> all the way up until the roof. This door is like 130 pounds. Uh, my wife wow. put a my wife put a thing up so that, you know, the kids don't walk by and see me, you know, so I don't look yeah. ridiculous. <laughs> they give me a little bit of a little bit of privacy. Um excuse me. But uh yeah, and then I I put a monitor in here. So yeah. this is, you know, there's you guys. Oh, nice. Uh, I learned, you know, I learned things. I'm friends with some engineers, which is yeah. good to know if, if you do voiceovers right. because we're not used to hitting all these buttons ourselves. So I, uh, my laptop is outside the booth. See, it's right out here. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. Right? And that, that cable is uh, plugged into um, 
no, it's like plugged down down in this area. And, yeah. You know, the, I have a time. I, I don't know what half this stuff does, but you know, you have to buy Pro Tools <laughs> or whatever. You know, and yeah. I don't know how to use right. that. But as a voiceover actor, I know just enough about Pro Tools to do the four buttons that I have to hit. So there you I, go. Uh, I, there you I go. learned that when you have your laptop in your booth and if you're running, like if you're zooming or whatever, it takes up a lot of power. So the fan on your laptop will kick on. Well, your microphone's mm -hmm. picking up that. So yeah. I was like, oh. Yep. So I had to buy longer cables. I had to put the laptop outside. I had to bring a monitor in here, which is quiet. You know, I, yep. I put an iPad, you know, here on a stand that I can raise and lower. I've got this yep. kind of movable arms. I can, if I want to stand up for a job, which I usually do. Uh -huh. uh, it's just easier. Plus this chair, you know, will start to squeak if I <laughs> get too excited. I like to stand up and keep the energy going. So it helps get yeah. my steps in. Mm -hmm. uh, so I've learned little things to like keep this thing moving. And now it's a, a little bit second nature for me. Mm -hmm. um, the only downside is I'm not in the room with the people that I'm working with. Yeah. So yeah. basically how, how yeah. I'm talking to you guys right now on the camera. Yeah. That's how I work with clients now. There you go. Mm -hmm. wow. So, cool. yep. so you're not alone. You're talking. You're interacting. But there's something about being in the room with them that I kind of yeah. miss. Also, yeah. I jump, mm -hmm. I'll, I'll jump at any chance to go to Los Angeles. Yeah, there you go. Just like being uh -huh. being yeah. together in person as a group. Mm -hmm. that's, exactly. We're yeah. a, we're a social creatures. We need people. Exactly. But I will say it did give me an opportunity to work from home. So you know the pandemic, as horrible as it is, I think. Uh, you know, yeah. it took yep, a little bit. Really... It helped me a little bit in the animation world. I felt yeah. a little insecure about it because I'm like, well, am I booking this because I have a booth and not everybody has their booth set up yet? Or am I booking this because I was the right person for the job? Yeah. But then I thought, well, I booked Jellystone before the pandemic. I booked yeah. Cuphead before the pandemic. So I have to like, you know, the little doubt monster that gets in your head. You got to like shut that thing up. You know, you got the yeah. job, do the job. And if they liked you, great. And if they don't, they get somebody else to do it. It's no big deal. Mm. Yeah, that's so, awesome. yeah. so mm. Cuphead's before... coming out in like four days. Yeah. Nice. Woo! It's awesome. Nice. Can't wait All to right, check if I'm it out. rambling, go ahead. That's great. That's fine. That's fine. That's fine. That's fine. Um, All right. So we're going to get into uh, the fetch questions really soon. But I, I did want to ask, so um, who are some of your inspirations for, uh, you know, acting and voice acting? You kind of went with which cartoon characters you kind of like that you kind of w w that you like that you just want to be where you want to be, you know? Yeah. I I think um I'm drawn to the melodic structure of certain people's delivery when they talk naturally. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> you know, there is a, you know, every note that comes out of your mouth is a musical note, even if you're just talking. I'm do 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 do. Yeah. And so I like people that know how to hit certain notes at certain ways so casually that even when they're, you know, people that can tell a great story, they don't have to, not, not even a cartoon voice or an actor, but people that, you know, people that can tell a great story where you're just paying attention to them. That's what I like. Um, for me, you know, Bugs Bunny was real to me as a kid. Yeah. Until I, you know, got old enough and realized, oh, that's, no, that's, you don't draw it and the voice comes out of it. The, there's a person and there's a microphone and they're creating that. Once yeah. I realized that was doable, then, you know, Mel Blanc, of course. I mean, if you're talking about, you know, yeah, uh, you know, the, the Mount Rushmore, some of the Mount Rushmore people, which you'd have mm -hmm. to have more than four. Yeah. Uh, but, um Dawes Butler, of course. Yes. Uh, uh, I know. Who, who, who created all those Hanna Barbera? You know, when I do Huckleberry Hound, it is not, it is not the Dawes Butler Huckleberry Hound. Yeah. And as mm -hmm. a matter of fact, if you look at most of the new Jellystone characters, there aren't too many true two voice. I mean, Jeff Bergman's Yogi Bear is probably the closest, and maybe my Captain Caveman, because I think there's only, unless you're going in a completely different direction, there's only really one way to do Captain Caveman. Unfortunately, I only had to do the Captain Caveman yell one time because that thing will shred you. <laughs> um, so, but as far as performers growing up, uh, George Carlin was very big for me. I really yes. love the way George yeah. Carlin narrated Thomas the Tank Engine. Yeah, because yes. George me Carlin, too, yeah. you know, I mean, some a lot of his material is n not appropriate for young viewers, but when you listen to him speak, he George when he writes his material, um, chooses certain notes and certain ways to hit words that are very appealing to my ear. 
And so I borrowed a lot from George Carlin's pattern of speaking, not so much his voice. Um, yeah. uh, I, I, tra- I tend to, especially when you do commercials, you, you know who's popular by who um, they want you to try to not sound alike, but emulate a little bit. Yeah. Um, Rough Ruffman is a hybrid of about four different people. Uh, oh, wow. It's my father, who's right. a great storyteller. It's a bit John Stewart in some of his, uh, the way he talks out loud to his audience at the beginning and the end of his shows, uh, mixed mm. in with like a little bit of the anger of Jack Black. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Right. And uh, and some of the dismissiveness of a Don Imus. So it was <laughs> like those characters, those people kind of influenced how I um, hosted that show as Rough Ruffman. Yeah. Um, oh, nice. You know, uh, mm-hmm. it's just part of like how I grew up in the time that I yeah. grew up in. Um, mm-hmm. You know, so there's a reason people like Christopher Walken's voice. It's not just the tone of his voice, but it's how he says certain words. It's mm-hmm. a reason people like the way Morgan Freeman speaks. Yeah. Uh, you know, it, it's just uh, people just like that stuff. So uh, that's usually where I get that. I think a lot of cartoon characters are based on celebrities or pop culture or people mm-hmm. they grew up with that's just m- most of it yeah nice yes. you know nice. June, june four uh, june four a is probably on the mount rushmore easily yeah uh mm-hmm. you know so you guys even had uh, one, uh john kennedy who we plan to have on the feature on it as well i like gave fetch yes he was on oh it. senator kennedy yeah no yeah, no, no. Was, <laughs> it's interesting no, who... no john kennedy the puppeteer bernie the pig Oh right, right, right. Yes, yeah. yes. God, there's so many, so many episodes. <laughs> I, I don't think they had the money to get a full cast. You yeah. know, their budget was really constrained, so they had me do all the voices. Yeah. On yeah. the show. Yeah. Um. You know, I lobbied several times. There was, uh, uh, there was an actor that was uh, in charge of you know making sure the kids had everything they need. I guess they would call them the Wrangler back then. Yeah. Uh, mm. Who I said on a number of occasions, I thought she would be great as a counterpart. Um. You know, but they always went back to like, yeah, we're paying one dude, let him do it. You know, I mean, I don't know if that was really <laughs> the thinking behind it, but I, you know, they would say, okay, we're doing a rough has another cousin. Rough always has another cousin. Yeah. yeah. Here's this, oh, yeah. here's a Swedish rock star, Roof Roofman. I was like, and I would go to, to Glenn Berger, who's our head writer. I said, I can't do a Swedish accent. And he'd go, oh, that's great. Yeah, the worse, <laughs> the better. I'm like, oh, God, how many more nations are we going to insult with my horrible dialect, you know? <laughs> you, got your, you got your other cousin, bro, your Bluff Ruffman. Yeah. And then Scruff Ruffman is that is that typical, like, how do you make the good guy bad? You just put beard stubble and you, uh, and you grind his voice. It's like, I think Fetch really embraced jumping the shark. It did. Just about every episode. Every episode was anticlimactic. Like nothing big happened that made everybody like go nuts outside of like who won <laughs> overall. Like Ruff always had these grand plans, yeah. And they would just be like, yeah, the the show would end. But you know, it, it just wound up being like Ruff just got kids to do things for him because he wanted high ratings and he was lazy. Yeah, you know, it, you really didn't <laughs> see too many characters like that on PBS at the time. These fallible characters. I mean, yeah. Ruff was yeah. like egotistical and fallible and he was insecure and he did, he wanted to make sure everybody was always talking about him. Yeah. You know, PBS didn't really have a lot of that. You know, it was like the first network that you go to as a kid because parents trust it. Yeah. Uh, you know, with, with Sesame Street and Mr. Rogers and, you know, back when I was a kid, mm-hmm. Romper Room and Magic Garden and Electric Company. Yeah. These were educational, oh, nice. sweet, very positive, diverse, um, you know, they really taught you to love everybody, and it really didn't get too heavy. Exactly. Uh, and so, all of a sudden, like even the you know the bad guys, like Oscar, wasn't too bad. Yeah. You know, not really. Still had a good heart. And here comes Ralph Ruffman, who's like, everybody, pay attention to me. Yeah. You know? <laughs> yeah, and you and, had spot uh, spot. I'm as the well. greatest, and oh, who's talking about me? And, uh, <laughs> Uh, I have deadlines have and I'm gnawing on things and I'm yeah. eating too much and I have a weight problem and yeah. I'm, you know, I get excited and then I'm depressed. It's like, yeah. oof, you know, that dog needs still therapy. Yeah. But they loved him. The kids yeah. loved him and I loved bantering with the kids. So, yeah, and he even awesome. had Spot Spotnik up there as well as his rival. Yeah. I don't think Spot, we never even gave a Spot a voice, did we? No. no. <laughs> he never. 
He never yeah. said anything. Charlene just, didn't either. She could bring... <laughs> Isn't that weird to have an arch rival that you he never... doesn't have a voice, yeah. You yeah. never had a conversation with. Man, yeah, it's I never, it's I like, never it's thought of that. I never like thought Charlene, of that. It's like Charlene, the pool no, next it's door. it's very strange. It's like the pool next door. Charlene, she yeah, didn't have a voice right. either. Yeah. You never... They didn't speak to her. I mean, if that was one... You, you couldn't give me... Sure. You could give me grandma's voice. Yeah. But you could not... Yeah, I think that's part of the reason. Like, there's no way I was pulling yeah. off. I get a deep, nasally, annoying voice. You're not giving me the voice of a poodle. Charlene, <laughs> I named Charlene. Charlene oh, wow. is actually, in real life, Charlene is the um, the wife of a friend of mine. And uh, and uh, the they showed me a picture of the poodle. And usually when you think poodle, you think champagne poodle and sh yeah. and then I go, Charlene. And my wife is like, why Why would you name it after her and not me? I was like, because Janie is not a poodle name. <laughs> yeah, it is. Charlene a is a poodle Jane. name. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I don't know. What do you want me to do? I mean, I just, I enshrined your grandmother. I can't, you know. It's not yeah, there you go. Name. You got your grandmother as part of the family. I get There's the Jamie people. Summers, the bionic woman, and then I think that's it. I don't know. Not to mention, you guys had Andrew Stanton on, who was the voice of Crush. From Disney. Did we? Yeah, there was an episode where it's Crush the Turtle. It's the thing oh, that that's Um, yeah. Oh, interesting. Yeah, so Forgot from what I understand, that, yeah. I mean, was he like, was he working at Disney at the time? I don't know. But I know I, it was, was weird. It's like they, they shot guys. it down and yeah, they shot it down in Orlando. And yeah. I think that's one of those interactive exhibits where some like somebody working there like is on a microphone that looks out of the audience and like does crush his voice. So I actually don't know. Is he credited? I think that in was that him. episode. It might oh, have cool. been cool. Maybe very cool. Yeah, that was a cool experience. My kids got a kick out of that. God, I forgot I nice. did that scene with crush. That's cool, man. Anyway, Matt, uh... that's cool. Yes. Anyway, yeah, that is pretty neat. Um, what what's your favorite challenge you did for Fetch? The yeah, uh, Fetch. Uh, the my favorite the episode was in season one. Most of my favorite stuff is going to be from season one. Uh, hmm. just because we were making it up as we went along, like we mm -hmm. literally were like writing the finale the night before the finale, like it was crazy. Yeah. But my wow. favorite is the uh, uh, Jackson. What's my favorite episode of Fetch? <laughs> what? <laughs> the float your boat. Yes. Oh, I know. The float yeah. your boat episode where they had to make the boats. That was my favorite Christ. episode. <laughs> I loved Khalil. I thought Khalil everything funny. Khalil did yeah. was hilarious. Oh, man. Uh, Khalil was 10 years old, and he was an instant star, and he was instantly comfortable, and he was so positive. Yeah. I, mean, I loved all the kids, but there was something nice. about Khalil that just cracked me up. Like, you just tell him to do something. Here, eat this bee. And he's like, okay, whatever. <laughs> you know. <laughs> now, Brian, now there was the episode of the beekeeping where, like, Khalil's yes. all in there and doing the beekeeping, and then yeah. Brian's like, Ooh, nah, I'm not doing no. that. With that no, gorgeous Boston accent of Brian, it. you know, you know <laughs> redhead. Brian was, Brian, have you ever seen a picture of Brian recently? No. Mm -mm. I don't know. I, I don't I'm friends so. with a, a, no. a, a number of the Fetchers and I, now I think one of the Fetchers from season one are getting married. That's how old I am now. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. wow. Yeah. Congratulations. One of them's getting married. Awesome. So Brian, Brian, Brian is like, Brian is jacked. Yeah. This wow. little skinny oh, redhead yeah. dude is muscles on top of like, like he's like prison jacked. Like he's yeah. big. Wow. Like he is absolutely ripped and he's tattooed wow. all over the place. I was like, whoa, yeah. this dude, I would like hire him. Like if I were like super famous, I'm like, dude, you want a job? Like just yeah. walk near me. <laughs> yeah. He's so big. I, I have, yeah. But uh, the float your boat episode is is my favorite. Nice. Yeah. So let me let me tell you how that how that show is done. Yeah. Uh, right. To my understanding, so how you see the show is you know you turn it on and it's you right. know and here come the contestants now the you get the fetch theme yeah. song yeah uh, <laughs> the Emmy winning fetch theme song which I do not have an yes. Emmy for. Yes. I sang it. I don't have an Emmy <laughs> for that. No. Wow. Why would you not give an Emmy to the person that? Sang the song. Sang I know. Her. And yeah. improved a couple of the reasons. Yeah, that's still sticking in my... I'm very diva bitter about that one. <laughs> uh, but it's a nice piece of trivia. Uh, so 
So you'll see the theme song, and then here come the contestants now, and they come running out, and I do the little factoid of each of the Right. Them, mm-hmm. And then uh, we yeah. say hello to everybody. Then I give them the challenges, and then right. go out and do the challenges, yeah. and I comment on the challenges, and then we We're cut away to the halftime quiz show, like, go, and go, then we go, go back to the, the challenges, house. and I'm... Yeah, and then I would go back to the. They go back to the challenges. I go back to commenting on the challenges. Then they come back. We talk. I award points. Yeah. We say good night. And da 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 da. None of that is done in one. order. Wow. None of it. I'm, 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 wow. wow. That's that's a, that's amazing. Wow. I'm kind of wondering where it the fact just was when when, when they're like go when they're like when they, they talk to to a doghouse. Is it, is it like backstage or something? It's backstage. It's plywood. It's like behind okay, there. Right, it's then. like somebody there. <laughs> oh, there's wow. somebody there with a headset on. That's like, Shh, okay, go that way. Lunch is over in the cafeteria. You know, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this is yeah the magic of television. When you're like, oh, it's not a real house. Boo. You know, it's like if you <laughs> open up if you, when you open up the mailbox to go fetch. There's a camera lens on the other side of it. You know, because they oh. show the people's face, like reaching in and grabbing the 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 challenge. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, the first thing that happens is the kids do the challenges. That's the yeah. first mm-hmm. thing that gets shot. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, right, but right. when they come in to be assigned their challenge, they did them already. They're done. Wow. They did all their challenges. Because wow. now we're shooting okay, for then. two for two weeks. We're shooting. Yeah. yeah. Good acting on the kids, huh? Yeah. So yeah. the first thing that happens <laughs> yeah. is I get a cup of coffee, and I go. And we're at WGBH in Boston. Yeah. Now mm-hmm. in season one, we shot on location in an actual barn. And I was outside in a like a camper with no air conditioning and just dripping sweat. Season two, wow. we were inside the air conditioned WGBH studios, which were like brand new. Mm-hmm. But you can't, you you can't, you can't, you know, replicate that first season of we have no idea what we're doing, but it's awesome. So, so, uh, so I get my coffee and I have my big giant script. And I go into a back room that looks like this, where I have a microphone and I have Mm -hmm. a a camera where I can see and I have a monitor and my monitor would show like what I'm looking at right now is you guys. But what I uh, would would see is the pictures in the studio, in Studio G. Mm. And they would look at the television monitor and they would see me dressed as me and they would see a microphone and I would have um, drawings of the characters cutouts on popsicle sticks so that when I was doing a character, you know, I'd hold up Grandma Ruff and I'm like, hello, dear, da, 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 <laughs> so that they right. have something to look yeah. at and talk to. Otherwise, they're just talking to me. So the illusion mm-hmm. is like gone. <clears throat> so the first thing I do is I have all the little factoids. I go, and here come the contestants now, and they come running out, and I say, he does this, she does that, blah, blah, blah. And then we cut, <laughs> we sit, yeah. everybody down, and then, I, and then we're just gabbing. I'm making it up. How's it going, wow. Fetchers? What you been doing? What are you, what are you up to? And that's where the banter is. So it looks like we're interrupting each other, and it's fantastic. Yeah. Because uh, cartoons don't have that. They're selling the illusion that you're speaking off the cuff live to a cartoon character. Nobody's wow. doing that. Yeah. So, uh, I, I, and I apologize if it's been done before. I haven't seen it. Yeah. <laughs> so then after we say, okay, uh, so and so, your challenge is in the mailbox. Go fetch, and they get it, and they go out the back door to the doghouse, and then they go get a snack. And <laughs> then right. we break, we stop, and then usually that we we shoot those intros two, three, four, five times. Oh wow! And oh. Uh, and then usually by then it's lunchtime, so we break for lunch, and everybody gets something to eat. Now while we're all eating, the fetchers that stay behind for the halftime quiz show are watching the footage that was shot out into the field. Because they have to become familiar with all the things they did on the challenge because they're about to be asked 10 questions. Yeah. Right. Wow. So they have to see the challenge. <laughs> they can't just like, you know, they didn't go on the challenge. They don't, they're not watching it in real time. The challenge was done two months ago. So mm-hmm. they have to watch, they have to spend their lunch hour watching the challenge. So then no. they come back. We're going to shoot the halftime quiz show. And that happens. Like I'm asking wow. questions. And they are answering them or they're not answering. They're getting it right. They're getting it wrong. And we're trying to get that thing in within like a minute, I guess. Yeah. 90 mm-hmm. seconds, maybe. And then, boom, what they get right, they get. You know, when I'm, when I'm ordering bonus points and at the end of the episode, that's I'm already told what those points are going to be. Mm-hmm. You know, well, I'm, yeah. I'm told what that's going to be because they know how they did out in the field because they watched them do the challenge. So that's like arbitrary. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, but the right. halftime quiz show is where the fetchers really make their points. 
That's oh, wow. where they can separate themselves from everybody else. Because, you know, it's a kid's show. You're not going to yeah, say is. like, well, you suck yeah. today, so you only get two points. You're not going to do that. <laughs> yeah. That's horrible. Why would you do that? That's right. like, not good. You're trying to promote science and teamwork. That just doesn't happen. So after the halftime quiz show is done, then we take another quick break, then we bring everybody back like they just came back from the challenges. So the fetchers now have to change, you know, they have to make sure they're in the same outfits they wore when they were on the challenge. Yeah. And so come back in and like, wow, how was that boat adventure that you did two months ago, but really you did it today? <laughs> they're like, oh man, you know, they even had to like wet Khalil's socks, you know, like, yeah, my socks are still wet. Just put them in the sink. <laughs> you know, oh, and then, then I do the, I banter with them a little bit. Then I give them points and then send them our way. And that's what we do in studio for two weeks. We do the beginning, the halftime quiz yeah. show, and the end with the points for all 20 episodes or however many there are. Yeah, 20 yes. episodes. Wow. We do that wow. for two weeks. Quick production, they already guys. did the challenges. <laughs> then that's all done. I get to go back to New York. Wow. Then, now I haven't seen any of the challenges. Now I start going into a studio in New York and the challenge is the video has been edited down as to into what they're going to use. And yeah. now the show becomes Mystery Science Theater 3000. You guys know that show? Yes. Where they watch old films and the gumball machine is like talking about it and they're just kind of making it up and making up the dialogue. It used to be a show. Yeah. I think it was on. Yeah. I don't know if it was Adult Swim or Cartoon Network or Nickelodeon. Mm. I'm not sure. But uh, then now I'm in a booth. And I'm watching a video of the challenges and I'm just making it up. I'm commenting on it. Yeah. Now, sometimes a director in my ear will say, oh, uh, make sure you mention that the kids have, you know, who this person is at the museum and all that. And I'll have a little yeah. bit of dialogue. It's bullet pointed so that I can uh, say like, oh, and now the kids are going to meet Jeff from da 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 da. But now I'm watching him in the field. So when Khalil and uh, 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 when Khalil's out on the race with, uh, I think, Julia and they're doing terrible yeah. You know, I'm, you know, I'm the rough regatta, all that stuff. I'm making it up. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, Khalil, paddle. And, and you know, the, now Jake's going around this turn, and there's only that one, and then Khalil is somewhere in Denver, and, da -da 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 -da, you know. Yeah. I'm just winging that. So that was, like, my favorite part of that was the rough regatta. And, uh, yeah. but, you know, you always have to, when you you have to be really careful when you're, like, teasing kids. Especially yeah. on a network like PBS, because you can't ever, ever, under any circumstances, be yeah. mean. Right. But yeah. you can poke fun a little bit if you're careful about it. And obviously, if it's too much, they'll say too much, think of something else, and then you quickly throw something else in. This show is a, a miracle. You know, if I talk for an hour and yeah. I give the editor five minutes of usable material, golden. There you golden. Because there's plenty of stuff that's garbage that never makes it into the show. Every once in a while, he'll send me a clip of me swearing or something. You know, it's like, <laughs> these are long days and we're very tired. Uh, you know, and the kids are tired too. I mean, you're asking children who are not actors to put in these 12 hours, these long days. I don't even know if it was, I think you can only have them for so long, but yeah. it felt like forever. And so it was, uh, it, it's a lot of fun, but it, it's all shot out of sequence. And then I go back in again. And they're like, we need you to say this line. We need you to put this here. We need you to change this to that. You know, maybe I have songs I have to sing. It goes yeah. on and on and on. And in the end, it's shown as you see, but it's really just a miracle done by the editing crew, the sound editing crew, the producers that are trying to like take all these hours of footage and assemble it in a cohesive way and then throw 20 episodes out. Anybody that's worked on a reality TV show, and this does poke fun of reality-based TV shows, Yeah, you know, the kids don't always get it right. Sometimes you have to nudge them in the field. Like, if there could be a science task they're working on, and nobody's getting it. And, like, mm -hmm. we have no mm -hmm. show if nobody figures it out. So you kind of lean in, like, think about this, that, and the other when you're doing It's like you're not, you don't want to feed them the answers, right. but you want to try to push them to think about the answers. Because it does promote science. It does promote teamwork. And it does promote critical thinking and generosity. And so yeah. and, and these kids are being filmed and there's pressure involved too for them to like do it right. And right. You know, it's just, and right. you get these moments that are just great. You know, Julia got poop on her fingers at the farm. Yes. You know, <laughs> like, that really happened. And of course, you know that they had to like, have, wait, don't wipe it off. Hold it there. I want to get the camera in on that. And you're like, Ugh. 
<laughs> you know, so, yeah, yeah, yeah. so that show is shot, shot so out of sequence and assembled miraculously uh, in post. Crazy. Yeah. One of my, yeah. one, one of my favorite episodes is actually also from the first season. It's the BLT for breakfast. Episode. Yes. One of my, fa- oh, one, my, my. Fa- one of my favorites is uh, I actually, so wa- that actually watch yeah, last year for Halloween. It was actually the Halloween episode. The yeah. Hunt, yes, haunted, those are good. Go to the haunted Manor, mansion. Yes. Oh my, that was, that's that an was actual fun. house. That was a fun one. Yeah. I, I, I stole the, the wooden plaque that said Ruffman Manor. I stole that. I had that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, when, when the show when a show yeah when a show ends and you happen to be in the studio you just start taking stuff you just, yeah. you just take as yeah. much as you can take yeah i do uh, have i didn't take enough the VL, i do VL. have another question but before we okay. get to it i do want to point out that andrew was actually credited for crush because i looked it up so he is nice. credited. oh good for... okay cool but, yeah something kind of crazy is that fetch was actually filming at the same time zoom i believe was filming and taylor was actually on zoom as well Yes. Zoom was WGBH and Taylor was on Zoom. Uh, and Fetch I, at the same time. I, I don't know if this is, uh, yeah, and Fetch, yeah. I don't know if this is um, accurate or not, but I, I think it, it, I think maybe PBS came to WGBH and like, we need something a little different. Thank and you. so mm-hmm. they kept elements of Zoom, I think, the feeling of it um, in yeah. the show and yeah. just added this crazy dog. Yeah. This crazy dog. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, the show. Yeah, Fetch kind of reminds me of Zoom because you know, it's, yeah, uh, same but, colors. You know, same color yeah. structure. Different. A lot of that's know. the same. A lot of it's the same crew. They all knew <clears throat> each other. It was yeah, a really right. tight knit family. I was very fortunate to be a part of, which, which, which uh, Zoom's and, and work with them without interrupting what they do. Yeah, and I, I, I b- and I believe one of the zoo, like one of the older Zoomers, actually worked on Fetch. If I'm correct, I think yes. it was a uh, Pablo. Oh, from... yeah, Pablo. Yes, Pablo and his wife, and they have two kids now. They were both uh, working on Fetch, and Pablo was wow. working on Zoom. I'm not, um, I'm not sure she was. Uh, Bernadette Yao was also a Zoomer. I right. Think. Yes. Wow. And yeah. She was uh, uh, worked on Fetch as well. You know, it's getting harder for me to remember all the little it's details. That's fine. Uh, it's fine. Uh, I'm shocked I knew this much. <laughs> but yeah, no, it, it, it is. It, it it definitely does have some elements of uh, Zoom because Zoom. The kids on Zoom, I remember there were a couple episodes where they did some on location kind of yeah yeah things. Like and I know Fetch, fetch you know, you know, yeah, Fetch was always on location. I, I really, I, you know, the one one of the downsides I thought was they only cast kids in the Boston area. Now I get it yeah. because it's like, you know, they want you want to be able to send them home at the end of a long day and, you know, you know, right. put everybody up in a right. hotel and it's kids, it's 10 to 13, you know, you know, I would have right. loved if the show was big enough, you know, to do a wide net cast. Yeah. Uh, that through would the be whole country though. because there were kids, you know, I found out later there were kids all over the country that really wanted to be in fetch and, you right. know, their parents wisely were like, we're not moving there so you can be on a show. That's not happening. Um, yeah. yeah. So we talked about we talked about the we touched on this briefly. So are there any uh, fetchers from the show that you still uh, keep in touch with? You know, uh, I, I I don't think I I don't keep in touch on the regular with any of them really because yeah. I'm an old person and they're young people and they have their own lives and all that. I mean, I'm friends mm-hmm. with most of them on um, yeah. A good number of them, especially from season one on Facebook, just because nice. you just do that. You're like, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. And then uh, <laughs> every so often, um, you know, it's like you always anytime it's their birthday, it's like happy birthday, Fetcher. Always yeah. anybody that works on the show gets a happy birthday, Fetcher from me. There you go. And, nice. you know, we've nice. been saying that nice for, you know, 10, 11 years to them. And wow. It's it's, it's great. Wow. It's great. Every I- so often I ran into Sam. Yeah. There were two Sams. Oh, that was the season we had. A Sam boy and a Sam girl, and we also had like we had two, two Brian. I think we had another. You had two Brian. Yeah, one on one yeah, season, Brian. One on the other. Yeah, but I think in the <laughs> same season, I had a Sam and a Sam and a something and a something. I can't remember, but it was like, oh goodness, yeah, season I, I three. bumped into the the smaller Sam, the boy Sam. I yeah. ran into him in the city, and he he was in college, I think, or maybe high school. God, oh, wow. I can't I'm sorry, Sam. But I didn't recognize him at all because, you know, you know how it is. You guys, all of a sudden, you know, your parents look the other way and then you, you shoot up, you, know, you get eight inches tall and your voice drops like overnight. 
<laughs> you know, and then you're yeah. like, you know, there's there's kids that my son would hang out, you know, with the pandemic, you don't see the kids as much and all, but there are kids I haven't seen in a year yeah. and I barely recognize them now, just in my own town. Wow. So that's crazy. Yeah. I wanna, yeah, so I didn't I didn't recognize Sam. I'm like, and yeah. I'm pretending like I know him. Like I pulled that move. Hey, yeah. bud. Yeah. Bud. Yeah. He's like, you don't On know the topic like, of uh, Fetchers, I want to put this out because JK, I think Chris and Matt knows this, but we might have Bethany on in a future episode. Mm-hmm. He was in season nice. four. Nice. Nice. Maybe have, yeah. maybe have oh, the yeah. both of you I on think- together. I think yeah, no. Beth, I think I I think I spoke to Bethany at one point. I think she was looking. She was like doing some acting or modeling in New York, or she lived in yeah. Brooklyn. Oh wow! And we were gonna try to grab lunch at one point. I, I guess it never happened. And uh, but I think she's in New York. I think there's a couple of Liza's out, out there on New York. Are, I believe. Yeah, I think Liza might be. I, I I'm trying to think. There's a couple others I think might be in New York. Um, I think Maddie. Is yeah. like an attorney or something. Uh, <laughs> Rosario from season is. two Might became be in DC. Uh, Rosario became a lawyer. We saw that episode of season three. Yeah, we got a couple <laughs> oh, of yeah. that are lawyers, man. We're sending yeah, we these did. kids we... to the tap. Yeah, we did see Rosario. I think DJ. I think DJ episodes, went to yeah. the military. I think I, I can't oh, wow. remember. Terrible. I don't know. That's don't know. crazy. Brian um, just got jacked. You know. <laughs> Yes, talking about Zoom, th- th- this year Zoom has actually went to their 50th anniversary, and now recently yeah. they're making like a like a event, basically each every every like every season of the old Zoom and, and probably probably in the future the new Zoom er- yes, version. Together. They're gonna do they're gonna uh-huh. do those events, and people can and pe- and those people can be answering from their fans. So yeah, yeah. which that was so, awesome. that, that was cool. So. I've I've heard this. I don't I've know heard if this, this as well. I don't I don't know if this is a rumor or not. But was there originally going to be a sixth season of Fetch? Well, I think the way it works is, you know, you have to be planning for the next season yeah. as you're doing the season you're on, yeah. because right. you've got to start casting, which takes a while. You know, you got to make sure you lock your writers in. You, you got to make sure that everybody, you know, and you got to get moving and grooving. Yeah. So there's a cutoff point. But uh, I was I was told they were working on a season six. And then but PBS was lukewarm to it. Uh, they're like, we have 100 episodes. What do we need? 124. And that's not to make PBS sound cold or anything. But you know, yeah. I get it. Uh, I was like, because I want another 20, man. You know, yeah. uh, <laughs> but they. um. And then they, so they was like, but they love Ruff Ruffman. The Ruff Ruffman character is very, it's an odd, not a lot of people watched Fetch. Yeah. Like it wasn't a highly rated show. Hmm. But from what it was explained to me, the Q ratings, which I still don't know what that is, even though somebody's explained it to me like 12 times. There is, it wasn't a very highly rated show. Yeah. But the people that did watch it loved it. Yeah. So it was like their highest nice. Q rated. It was there was like, there was like Elmo, and yeah. then Ruff Ruffman, <laughs> mm-hmm. and you know. So I felt like you know cool. people liked it, and it it never got big, but there were people that really really liked it. Like I never yeah. heard like a complaint about it. Wow. And then this uh, defunct land TV, yes, yeah, I know this that documentary, yeah, okay. yeah. and all of a sudden I'm getting texts and emails like, dude, you have to watch this. I had no idea what Defunct Land TV was. None. Yeah, Zero. Right. And apparently it's very popular. Mm-hmm. And they did a whole little mini. They, they got like 99.8% of that right. Uh, but I really loved the detail. And I'm still like getting, I don't know. Shout out to you, Defunct Land The TV. amount of views on this thing and the comments. Yeah, I get emails yeah. every day with another comment. You know, you wow. were my childhood. This, I'm in science now because of this show. I think it's probably similar oh, to the way yeah. people felt about Zoom. Like they grew up on right. on Zoom and learning about science and teamwork. And so, you know, Zoom mm-hmm. is having its its reminiscing. It has, right it has that own way. Like oh, that yes. Too. I didn't realize how much people liked the show until I saw that. Yeah. Uh, but I was real right. proud of it. Real proud mm-hmm. of it. If I, it I if, would love them do a reunion. I would yeah. love a reunion season. I was going to say. If Fetch would, where you would use the old back, fetchers as like the helpers, you know, as the experts to help the younger fetchers, like do it. I would love that. That yeah. would be awesome. If it were to come back, would you return for it? Well, I mean, I could still do the voice. Yeah, you just yeah, every <laughs> so voice. I would assume it would still be me. You know, every time they do Put something, the they use Ralph Ruffman. They tend to they tend they tend to call. 
Yeah. You know. They need to. Uh but who knows? Yeah. I mean, look what's going on with John DiMaggio with uh you know, with uh Futurama right now as Bender's voice. Yeah, and Blue's Clues came back, so we so, need Right, to I heard about yeah. that, yeah. Yes. Good. And John's John, awesome as well, I, the voice of Dragon. Yeah. I don't know John personally, but um I, I hope things work out for all parties on there. Uh yeah, there you go. I'm really uh I'm really impressed with the you know, every once in a while social media gets it right and the fans are really rallying behind the talent on that show. Yeah. So I mean, I don't know the ins and outs of negotiation and whatnot. It's none of my business. And uh but there's a bunch of actors that were offered um to audition for the role of Bender, seeing as John is kind of you know, putting He's his ten awesome. toes in the sand and, you know, fighting for himself. And a lot of actors are like, no, I'm not going to read on it. So <laughs> there's that right. support wow. mixed with that. So I, I hope it works out to where both Hulu and the producers mm -hmm. and writers and all the actors and John gets to still do it. It's a it's a great character. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Yes. And we'll have to muster him in the future. You know, but it, it does go to show you, like, you know, I mean... You're gonna you bet on yourself because nobody else is gonna do it. Yeah, right. So what we'll to John on in the future because he's dragon, but yeah. possible. Mm -hmm. So um, yeah. So after so after Fetch ended, so a couple of years passed by, and then the Rough Roughman show happens. What what was your experience yeah. like uh, doing that? Mm -hmm. less Getting to, fun. I think less fun for me mm -hmm. uh, because you didn't have the Fetchers there. I can understand. Yeah, I mean, you still interacted with some kids. It, it. It's just I not. You, you, a, you don't have the same like vibe. It's yeah. It didn't feel as big, and it wasn't supposed to because it wasn't. Right. You know, it was a way to continue it's just, it's, the character. Um, it, it was useful. I thought. I thought. Um, what we did was good. With a lot more singing. Yeah. Which was mm -hmm. fun. A lot more grandma, which was great. You know, so it right. was there. I, I, I was happy to do it. It's just more of the focus, which is off of men, really, to be honest. That's why, yeah, that's why I cost. I, that's why it cost the Wolfman show. I felt like if you were gonna go away from Fetch, you had to go fully away, and I would have wanted a full-on, you know, kind of not SpongeBob. God forbid you can compare that, but I wanted like, right. yeah. let's do a cartoon now. Let's do that. And you can good, still yeah. mix in some live action. It just, I don't know. I don't know. I think you have to be. I think when you're on PBS, you know, it's it's a publicly funded. Um, network and so you have to provide an educational component which isn't difficult to do but you have to have a certain amount of science you have to have a certain amount of this that and the other yeah. and so you can't stray too far from that and tell you know when you're telling your story um having said that you know it, it was fun to do but I, you know, I'm, I like yeah. my old show better, you know. And yeah. it's not to say people didn't like do an amazing job, but I think even the people that work there, it's like, it's not the same, but it's fun to have the gang kind of back in, you know, because also you miss, you know, I miss the film crew. I miss a lot of the cameramen and a lot of, you know, I just, I like being in yeah. an actual studio doing an actual television show. Yeah. I'm mm -hmm. sure it's the same, you know, the, a somewhat slightly similar feeling to how people did, you know, when Mr. Rogers was on set doing his thing. Mr. Rogers and, uh, and Sesame Street is on set yes. doing the Muppet Tree. And, Another you know, show too. I, yeah. I just didn't want to do a strictly I'm in a booth voiceover job for this thing. And if I was going to do it, I wanted a full cast. Yeah, there you, you go. know, but right. Uh, the videos are there and they're they're helpful in their own way. And it's, mm -hmm. you know, it's easy, yeah. easy to click on. And yeah. kids so, that didn't grow up on Fetch with Rough Ruffin could find that on the app. You know, it was more app based. Right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. so we know we did rough and all that, but are you still able to do Kenny the Shark? Well, well I mean, Kenny the Shark is is not very far a departure from even also not de where where rough goes above yeah. my range slightly. Kenny goes slightly below it. And, and I think if you put clips of the two together, they almost bleed into each other. Yeah. You know, right. you know, Kenny yeah. was more a little, you know, you had to be, you know, slightly bigger, but, uh, yes. you know, hey. No, yes. you know, but there's a lot of <laughs> Marty. You know, there's yes. you know, there's like uh, I mean, that had a really really good cast. Yeah, um, yes, really fun to work with those actors. And I was in the booth with like some of them too. And um, you know, that was uh, it was uh, that was uh, Kenny the Shark was just a fun. Yes. The person I really love that. 
Chris doesn't know, and Matt doesn't know this, but the person who did the theme song for that actually has a contact page on their website, so we might try to well, get them in the future. That'd be nice, yeah, we could try and get yes. them. Speaking of Candy Shark, do you have a favorite episode? Uh, you know, I know I, mine is uh, the checkup one. Hmm. The dentist episode. Oh, I don't that's even the one know. It's mean, like, is that the one where he goes to? Is that the doctor or the yeah, dentist? That's the dentist that he goes to. The dentist that he thinks Yeah, cat. that's a good one. Uh, there was like that Saturday Night Fever one where it was yeah. like, you know, Kenny liked to. I thought when they introduced um, when they introduced Marty the dog, uh, yeah. who is voiced by the uber talented uh, Rob Bartlett. Um, I, it was great because R- R- Rob and I uh, clicked right away. Yeah. And it was a nice uh, it was uh, the vocal range worked between the two of us and uh, we were able to uh, really just riff on things um, together. They let us really play around with it a little bit. So it was uh, it was fun. I really liked uh, yes. Rob's Marty the dog character very much. Uh, but a favorite episode, yeah, it's probably it's probably the one the doctor one. It probably uh, nice. uh, the, or the Saturday Night Fever one. Yeah. I guess was kind of a good mm. one too. Um, yeah, that was all right. <laughs> Those are some good ones. Do you have any um, stuff sure. like any stuff or anything from like Fetch or, Kenny or anything or that you want to show? Uh, you mean like any any toys or anything? They never merchandise that show. It drove me crazy. No, like, do you have you anything from I, the show I, itself? Not like mer- like the cast jackets or something or whatever they gave you. No, cable. they did. Well, they did. Um, they did like these gray. Yeah, these like heather gray it was in the t-shirts. There was like short sleeve and long sleeve. Yeah, with rough on, uh, <laughs> on the front like this with his arms up, and then they had problems oh, okay. with that because I, I, yeah, they're like, yeah, like, yeah, like we gotta okay. move it. We gotta move this on the girls' shirts. It looks like they're honking their chest, and I'm like, yeah, you know, <laughs> we think that this- <laughs> that was such a like of all the things you could put on a shirt like rough like his hands up like he's being like yeah. he's being robbed at gunpoint was such an odd choice. I always like my favorite image of Ruff was like the one we have where he's just kind of like leaning yeah. at the Fetch three thousand, like smiling, like like the host of a show. I think that's the best picture yeah. of him. I would have liked that. I do have a bunch of baseball hats that yeah. has the logo, like, which is great. I love that. You also um, said you had the Ruffman Manor sign. I do have the Ruffman Manor sign. Uh, I'm sorry, I don't have it in the booth with me, but I I have that. Okay. Uh, that's just a carved wood thing. It's just the you know the props department did a great job on it. Yeah, um, it is, that yeah, place I mean, is an actual I, house too. I, 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 for some reason, I yes, can't get on a damn lunchbox. Crazy big house. I just want to get one. Ca- I want to get on a lunchbox one time. <laughs> I had an agent. I had an agent once when I started. She's like, "That's what we got to. We just got to get you on a lunchbox. That's the goal. Get you on a lunchbox. Nope, Still no happened. lunchbox. Come so on, Matt, lunchbox. So so Matt or Marty, you want to take the next question? I don't think we can hear you. I was going to say, should we ask the any advice? Some good puppetry work. Down again. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right, uh, I'll ask you. Do you have any advice for people who want to get into it? What you do, or what you do? Um, you know, it's it, it's funny. You, we get you get asked that question a lot, and there's such a. I don't know if there's one direct way to kind of get into this. Yeah. Um, you know, I mean, you certainly can't get into it on your own. You need an agent. You yeah. need that. But I think watch everything. Hey, see yeah. what's trending is one. Really get an understanding of like, see how the pace is on one cartoon rather than another one. You know, things yeah. move quite quickly on Rick and Morty in a way that yeah. they don't on Clifford the Red Dog. So um, one of the things you need to do uh, when you're... You don't necessarily need to have a billion different voices. There yeah. are a lot of actors that do a lot of that. I don't have a ton of different things. I can raise my voice. I can lower it. But I would not consider myself in any way like a, a vocal virtuoso. I don't do a lot of different dialects. Uh, uh, but uh, but I try to be as moment to moment in, in how I deliver things. As, I try to be as honest as possible when I am delivering a line, mm-hmm. which is kind of an actory schmactory thing to say. Yeah. If you're looking to get into cartoons, you got to watch cartoons. You got to exactly. watch even ones yes. you don't like. I mean, age appropriate, obviously. Right. But you got to you, you got to see how the sausage is made. And you know, you have YouTube too, which is great because right. You know, people don't really buy DVDs anymore, so you don't get all those great 
bonus mm-hmm. footage where they have you know the director commentary and all that. But you can find a lot of those things yeah. behind the scenes things on YouTube where producers and writers will talk about the craft and actors will talk about how they create voices. So studying, yeah. learn who's in the mm-hmm. business, learn who's working, watch what they do. Really try to get a sense of the of the history of of the craft, and so you can kind of get a feel as to where it's going and what might be useful. You yeah. know, when when I'm when I'm auditioning for something, you know, I, um. You know, Deep Bradley Baker, who's about yeah. as successful, uh, 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 you know, he's on the Clone Wars and he's the Bad Batch and he's on just about everything. He's on everything. Uh, you know, I, I took a class with him when he came to New York once and he's like, you know, you have to ask questions, you know, who's writing this? What age is it geared toward? All right. So say I'm playing like, say I'm playing like a troll on a bridge. Yeah. All right. So you could make this a really scary troll if you want. And trolls are scary creatures. However... What network is it on? Yeah. What age are you aiming for? If it is aim, age, uh, you know, five to eight, you know, three to five, it's just, if it's preschool, well, you can't scare children. That's the first thing they're going to, you know, you, you have to be a monster that's scary slash not really scary. Right. You know, yeah. Right. Aware of it. So how you read on something uh, depends on uh, the age of the demographic that you, you it's being geared to. Um, you you want to find out who wrote it. What do they also yeah. write? So what kind of style do you think they like? Um, taking classes. There's uh, it's a huge way to get to learn how to do this because there are animation actors that teach these yeah. classes. You know, Bob Bergen has been the voice of Porky yes. Pig for decades. Yes. Wow. Uh, you know, his his waiting That's list awesome. is like five years long to get on one of his classes. Yeah. But D. Bradley Baker taught out and and and. I took J.P. Karliak, who's the voice of uh, who's the voice of the Boss Baby oh. on uh, Netflix on oh, yeah, their okay. series. He taught a class online. You know, I do this, but I still take classes. Yeah, because mm-hmm. it's like going to the gym. You want if I can learn one thing from another teacher that I didn't have before, I want that on my tool belt. There you go. So taking classes with experienced people, taking classes with experienced casting directors. Don't take a class with an actor that's teaching an animation class that doesn't really do it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, there's a lot of actors out there teaching voiceover that don't really do it. And so they're teaching. Yeah. You know, you want somebody that, that's doing it and teaching it. Yeah. Uh, so that's a great way to learn. There's really no major in college. You have to kind of do it on your own. You can learn how to act. I think taking an improv class is important if you yeah. want to do animation. I think learning how to improvise is crucial to work in animation. Keeps your mind sharp. Um, reading scripts you can find online yeah. is great. Uh, reading scripts. Uh, if you can get a script of an episode that somebody happened to upload and watch the episode while you're reading the script, you can kind of see where they've kind of gone from the script or stayed on it. And it's just doing it over and over and over again. After exactly. that, the hardest part, you know, once you start to learn those things, the hardest part is landing an agent. There and there is really yeah. no easy way to do that. You put yourself out there. Maybe you're a stand-up comedian. Maybe you're in an improv troupe and an agent happened to come see you. It's very difficult during a pandemic to get anybody's eyeballs on you. But people are uploading their work to YouTube now. They're being very creative at home. Um, but taking classes with experienced people, I think, is big. Um, and, you know, you got to be in it to win it. Los Angeles is where it's at. You know, this mm-hmm. pandemic will end at some point and people are going to want to get people back in boots yes. and you got to be where the work is. Yes. But we'll see. We don't know how this is going to evolve. I mean, all over the world, careers yes. are changing, changing. You know, what mm. is the meaning of work now and where do you have to go into an office building anymore? Yeah. People are rethinking that. Yeah. So the next question I think would be a good question for Ruff. Ooh, okay. So, <laughs> okay. So, so okay. rough. You know, you've had all these fans of <laughs> y- your yeah. show. What do you have to? What do you have to say to all the fans? <laughs> yeah. Of your show. Uh, well, there's not enough of you because I'm not doing my show anymore. <laughs> so uh, he's not wrong. Where, that top Jason Marsden. Where, where were you on Twitter fighting for more me? <laughs> no. it was a nice I don't place. care for oh it. Gosh. 
Uh, Everybody's uh, rallying behind Bender, but nobody's rallying behind the old roughster. <laughs> I get it. Uh, I get it. I get it. I get it. It's fine. Well, <laughs> oh, Ruffy, oh, they only like the cat Ruffy show. Oh, thanks, Grandma. Way to twist that knife in the old roughster's backside. <laughs> <laughs> They just, uh, they just talk to Jason Morrison. Sorry. <laughs> that's awesome. And so, and no, so I, I love my fetchers. I feel like it's a private club. Yes. Uh, and I so didn't it, realize, uh, I guess I didn't realize how many there were uh, until the uh, defunct, uh, TV Land uh, documentary uh, came out, and I'm very appreciative. Yeah. Uh, uh, I like hearing from yeah. uh, from kids who who took the science and, and went on into a career of their own in that field and, uh, yeah. you know, took the time to sit down and, and watch our show for five years. So I'm, I'm, I'm happy about that. I'm happy uh, for the parents still, too. And we still you know, keep on it. saying yeah. about the show still to this day. So yes. yeah, yes. Pa parents, uh, parents, you know, parent, show, when your kids too. watch shows, it's hit or miss. Like at some yeah. point you can't stand hearing the same voices, but parents were very favorable to fetch with rough Ruffin because I always try to throw in just enough Jokes that the adults got without yeah, being yeah. adult oriented. So uh, the, yeah, yeah, when you when you can make the kids and the parents happy, you ha you have something good. Yeah, yeah. And so and so for you, Jim, what do you have to say to the fans of all your work, like Fetch, Kenny the Shark, whatever, Jellystone? I don't think anybody knows who I am. So this is why I keep. <laughs> this is why I work. You know, yeah, yeah. I mean, I have I don't have a lot of followers on social media. You know, I've been able to make a living for 20 years and nobody knows who the heck I am, which mm -hmm. is great. Interesting. That's fine. And it allows me to it allows me to do something. Kind of and then, right. yeah, it allows me to do something and then disappear and do something else. And, right. uh, you know, hopefully by the you, end of the career, you, people you can look back and go, oh, is this I remember that. I remember this. Yeah, oh, that was part was of cool. my childhood yeah. is what they could say. Yeah, yeah I've never Pretty been much. to a Comic Con. I've never done any of that stuff. Oh, it's I don't know. I'd be cool. no, I just either. like do one. I just like we to do my to job and then and then and then sit on the couch. <laughs> That's pretty you much it. One. Uh, yeah. I mean, uh, you know, who knows? I mean, now that I've kind of got, I've got some skin in the game in the animation world. I mean, uh, who knows? I just, I want to do more all the time. I've got some things coming up. Cuphead show is uh, debuting on Netflix on February 18th. I yeah. play Ollie the Onion Netflix and cool. a couple of ghosts in an episode. I got to work with the uber talented uh, uh, Gray Griffin. Oh my Ooh, God. Geez. Oh yeah. Wow. That we is, need to get wow. her. That is cool. I, I, that is awesome. I don't, I don't, I haven't, I don't know if it's, I have like an unhealthy obsession with her whole brand. Right oh my now. gosh! I'm I, I kind of do as well as, as I'm doesn't? a huge fan of her, and we definitely need to get her. Yes, on. yes. I yes. mean, she's just—it's—it's uh, it's like everything she touches is gold. She's in so many things. She's exactly. A singer, a yep. singer, performer, musician, super mom, incredible mostly. voice talent. I'm just—you uh, know—I follow her insane on social media, and I'm like. Crazy. I yeah. fear I'm heading into stalker status, but she'll let me know <laughs> when it gets bad. But we I got to, to get be her in the on this I, podcast. For sure. yes, oh, I don't around think around I could now. even get her on the phone, let alone on a podcast. But, um, <laughs> but no, I got to. But when when I when I was in Los Angeles to work on the Cuphead show, pre-pandemic, of course, this is this might have actually been like right before it. Um, <laughs> I didn't know this, but I, I got in the booth with her to to do one of the episodes, and it was just it was just about the coolest thing. It, it yeah. was very uh, wow. getting to meet wow. getting to meet the the talent that's out there and how close. Um, that community is uh, with each other has just been a yeah. joy and I really miss yeah. going out there and, and working with them and meeting them and now that I'm kind of doing animation now it's like I want more of it boy you get a taste wow. of that you're like more mm. please oh, yeah. more please and thank you oh yeah but I have I, I did I had an episode of Casa Grande's that was out I played the the was it the Halloween yeah. the candy goblin which is just yeah. a monster yeah. thing but it was cool I got on the Casa Grande's um, I'm working on a couple of things now that I'm fortunately I can't talk about because that's how this works. Right. But I am working on yep. something for another show for HBO Max. I'm working on right now. I'm working. I'm working on a show for Sesame Productions, not oh, Sesame oh, Street, nice. but it's definitely their production company. Um, and uh, starting in July of next year, I'm supposed to be working on something for Disney. So wow, uh, wow. Uh, that is awesome. You never know, though. Man, you never know. Congratulations. So, we'll, yes, we'll see. Yes. I'm in yes. the club now, so let's see if I can yeah. stay in it. 
Rest yeah. in peace. Yeah. Rest in peace. Uh-huh. Yeah. And uh, if people want to contact you, uh, where can people find you? Uh, I mean, I guess on the socials, you know. I mean, I'm on Instagram. I guess it's a public account. You know. Yeah, I, I follow you. I don't even know what my handle is. That's how terrible I, I, I think I, guess it's, I think it's just your name is what it is. Yeah, it's probably, yeah, if you do a search for me, they'll probably, I mean, I'm on Twitter. It's probably at Jim Conroy, maybe even yeah, 17. I, I, everything or, is yeah. going to be in the description down below. Instagram, so. yeah. Is, yeah, yeah, all that stuff. Find my yeah. socials and put them there on. You. I don't know what they are. Yeah, I yeah, think Marty should ask. There you go. Question. I just followed you on uh, Instagram. That's it. Yeah, done. We'll, we'll, we'll oh, do hang on. My phone's we'll, blowing out. Some jerk's trying to follow me. I followed you as well. Me. Oh, you did we'll follow nice. you on Instagram we'll, Twitter. We'll, we'll, we'll probably do the same after after we're done here. Yeah, we will do the same. Yeah. yeah. You I think Marty should end this question because he Matt didn't really get asked a lot of questions. I think he no, no. Come on, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm. Come I'm, on, I'm, I mean, should we got to change be- it up besides well, Chris asking so, this question every single I, time? I'm be- plus, I'm better anyway. So, um, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, after all this, this podcast is called uh, Jake's Happy Nostalgia Show, so it's only fair to ask this question: What is something that's nostalgic to you? <laughs> what do I get nostalgic about? You mean, yeah. or mm-hmm. yeah, yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. Um, probably any references to my hometown. Yeah. I guess mm. there you go. Uh, I grew up in a small town in the Hudson Valley between the Catskill and Schwangunk Mountain, and uh, you know, it used to be a big uh, vacation and hotel industry up there, and. Uh, you know, I I like hearing stories of of where I grew up. I get pretty nostalgic about that. Um, nice. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I mean, um, that's it. I don't get terribly nostalgic, but yeah. uh, hmm. usually usually anything that that reverts back to home will will pull on the heartstrings a little bit. That's awesome. Speaking of, speaking of the show, if if you're gonna bring like like a a fetcher or something in the future of Who's part of Fudge Riverman? Would you be down to be back in the show? Wait, ask that again. Would you be down to be back on the podcast if we get like a Fetcher or something? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just don't tell them it's gonna be me. <laughs> I don't trust me. You got it. Surprise! Bethany yeah. mentioned. Yeah. 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 I didn't, I didn't have favorite a favorite episode because I look completely episodes. different now. I didn't have a beard back then. You know, I was this favorite shaven Beth- boy of yeah. thirty Beth- something. So fun fact. Bethany was on a friend of mine's podcast. She actually mentioned you in in their interview. Oh, cool! Oh, wow! Oh, wow! Nice. Awesome. Thank yeah. you, Samuel Warren. Awesome. Awesome. Yeah. Ah, ah. Yes. Thank you for coming. Oh, it's been a blast. Yes. No, yeah, thank thanks you so for having me. I appreciate it. Absolutely, yeah. guys. You know, yes. cool beans. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah, we we really like your work of what you've done. Keep good job of where you where you are, and keep keep it what we're doing. And can we what's what, what will happen for you down the line? Jim? Exactly. Oh yeah, yeah, man. Yeah. Uh, definitely. I mean, I've learned. You know, they they don't let you talk about projects, but when they do let you talk right. about it, they they want you to post it on all your socials. So I'm learning how to do oh, that. Yeah. So mm-hmm. oh, yeah. so when I have things that are gonna come out that I'm gonna be on, you'll see it you'll see it on the Instagram, the Facebook, the the Twitter, all that good stuff. So right. that's yeah. how you'll mm-hmm. see if I'm uh, still putting food on the table or not. Yeah. <laughs> right. yeah. Yes. Thank oh, you all thanks so much. a lot, Jake. I appreciate it. Yeah. Thanks for reaching you're, out to me and uh you're welcome. Oh, you're welcome. this. So. You're welcome, Jim. And, oh uh, yeah! Do you remember? Do you remember that, Jim? Do you remember the? Oh yeah! Look at that! Oh, that's so funny! Oh, I look love at it. That. <laughs> uh, it's great stuff. Yeah, yeah my, I, st- I, I my son's you, still my son's should. sixteen. He still watches it. <laughs> oh wow! <laughs> wow! Wow! Yeah, 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 yeah he knows uh, every episode. He's like the Family oh. Historian. <laughs> Basically, <laughs> big fanatic. Um, yeah, I remember you told me that you, you show your grandchildren or your children or something like that. Uh, uh, oh, which yeah. I really appreciate from you. They love that, that stuff, was, so was thank you. Part of my childhood. Yeah. Wonderful. Yeah, That's it was a huge part of my childhood. You guys well. like it. Oh, yeah. I really do appreciate mm-hmm. that. Before we end, this is a historic milestone for us. Um, this is our 25th show, folks. And um, mm-hmm. yes, we, we, yeah. we really just want to say on behalf of Matt and Jake and Wyatt and everybody, thank you. Thank You're you for welcome. your support. Yes. Thank well, you so much. congratulations on 25. That's a big deal. Mm-hmm. Yeah, guys. How do you? I mean, I mean, we rush it. I mean, we I just, we just I, I, I'm, I'm here at the quarter turn of your journey. 
Yes. So, yeah. Good. Well, well, well Matt might catch up. Really apart that we, long. We do have, like what three, four episodes so far. I think so. I think this is my fourth. I think. Yeah. We yeah. we so do that, we do have a guest plan for the thirtieth, but we're not saying who that is. We're not saying. Yeah. Yet. Surprise. Uh, All right. We're not All saying right. yet. We're not saying yet. Oh, there you go, Jim. Well, send, I just followed you. Send on me Instagram. a link to it, so I'll watch it. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> Right. Yeah. We're on all podcast platforms wherever you find them. Yes, yep. You got it, gentlemen. All right. Hey, thanks for having me, and uh, we'll catch you on the flip side. We will. And there, yeah. there you go. And there you go, Jim. Go just... fetch. <laughs> yes. Yes. Go yes. Fetch. yes. yes. <laughs> yeah. Thank you all so much for awesome. watching this episode. Hope you all enjoy and keep sticking around for future episodes. You are worth it. I'm planning for you guys to see more, but you are worth it. Enjoy this. Yes. And I'm. All of us throughout were really enjoy with talking to you, Jim. So yeah, 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 yeah we really did. Work keep up we really did. Work like, stuff. click, and subscribe. Right, that's what everybody does. Yes. Yes. Like, yeah. and ring the bell. Yeah. Like, share, ring the bell click, too. and subscribe. And before we wrap up, any last words from you, Ruff? Ah, uh, I need money. <laughs> I'm surprised. I'm surprised they were watching. I'm canine, watching. Uh, canine dog show host, successful, uh, is willing to work. <laughs> I'm surprised your Uncle Ruff McRuffman Tosh doesn't have any last words. Oh, uh, uh, <laughs> that's, the worst, that's the worst voice. That's the worst Scottish <laughs> accent in the yes! history of all <laughs> Ruffy. That's <laughs> terrible. I've never watched the show. They don't have it on the old BBC. Yeah. <laughs> so yes. that's it. Just watching cats. Oh All right, fellas. Uh, that is thanks, awesome. thanks, yeah. for, thanks for leaving yeah. off with like my worst dialect ever. <laughs> hey, it's fine. It, it's fine. All right. It's fine. Yeah. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. And we, we appreciate I'll see you at support, Kowloon Restaurant. But, see ya. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And from all of us to all of you, hope you enjoyed and see you on the next episode. It. But until then, you're all with us. See you the next, see you next time. time. Bye-bye. Take care. See you next time on another episode of Jake's Happiness Talk Show. Be sure to follow us on social media and stream us wherever you find your favorite podcasts. Bye-bye.